It's Brainwash with Dr. Tom and Drum Rolls with Scotty Irvin. Pink Floyd, Run Like Hell. I should point out this is the very first song I ever taught myself how to play on drum set. Didn't have a drum set at this point, but I would practice with the snare drum I already had mm-hmm. and some other things that were lying around the house. Uh, I used the bass drum, or not, I didn't, I didn't have a bass drum. I used the snare drum <laughs> case as a bass drum at home and actually used it once in a live show because for some reason one of the other people in the band with me didn't bring their instrument in. And I'm like, we have no bass drum. Mm-hmm. Why do we have no bass drum? And I said, okay, we have a bass drum. We I pulled the case out and did the best I could with it. My <laughs> band director gave me some extra credit for at least trying to do something <laughs> creative, which somehow comes into the picture later on. We'll talk about that in a moment. But um, Run Like Hell was a song I really liked off of the uh, the Wall album by Pink Floyd. Mm-hmm. This was actually the, the first album I'd ever heard that went into what we call the concept album variety. Yeah. It also helped me understand some of Pink Floyd's earlier stuff, which I had not heard at that point. No Sid Barrett in my life at that point, so... <laughs> Not even close. I, I, I mean, I love that stuff now, but I couldn't have handled it then. Yeah. I would have not known what to do with it. Um, but uh, Run Like Hell struck me as one that was very firm, somewhat easier to play. But oddly enough, there was one part that had me intrigued. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize it at the time, but there's one part I'm going to try and play later on where I thought it was just being played live. I had no concept of you go in, you record a certain part, and then add something like an accent or whatever later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have the basic beat going, but there's a cymbal roll going that there is no way he could have physically played while playing the drum set. Mm-hmm. But you couldn't have told me that at the time I heard this. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh, well, that's one person doing all that. wonder how he did it. So I came up with my own way of doing it. <laughs> Which you will hear later and laugh your heads off at, I'm sure. But anyway... That was the first song I ever sat down and said, see if I can play this, you know, so. How do you tell what a good drummer is? Hmm. That's a point of debate. (laughs) Um, Any drummer that seems to be on a mission to destroy every other (laughs) band member that they have, I would generally say that is not a good thing unless the people he, he or she is playing with happen to be completely irresponsible on their instruments and just can't keep up with them. Um, generally, I think it's the same way with any musician. If you do something that completely destroys everything else around you and that wasn't the intention, <laughs> that's probably not a good thing. All right. you know. So I think ultimately it's how well do you play with others. Mm-hmm. Drum solos are great, but they don't necessarily get you work in a band. I'm not saying don't play them. I'm right. saying just you know work on playing mm-hmm. within a, a band unit as well as working on solo. Mm-hmm. You know. So what's the role of the drummer? Role of a drummer. Some would say strictly a timekeeper. Mm-hmm. Um, I think timekeeping and adding spices when necessary. Mm-hmm. That's a little cooking analogy for you yeah, folks Yeah, that was great. You know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I think a drummer is, though. What's the importance of a drummer in a band? I'm going to say something my uh, previous band director said to me once. I'm not saying I feel that I am this important, th- this important, but I think the idea of this can be. Mm-hmm. He told me once. He said, "Band has a bad drummer, band isn't good. Mm-hmm. Band has a good drummer, band is good. Mm-hmm. If the band has a bad night, but the drummer has a good night, band has an okay night. Mm-hmm. Band has a really, really, really good night." Drummer has a bad night. Mm -hmm. Band has a bad night. Mm -hmm. In other words, a lot of what's going on Mm drum-wise, well, you can have the biggest tree in the world, but if the roots holding that tree up aren't holding the tree up, Mm -hmm. who cares? Yeah. There's a little Bible parable um, that some of us sang in church about the wise man and the uh, foolish man. The wise man builds his house upon a rock. Mm -hmm. The foolish man builds his house upon the sand. The first big wave comes along. Guess where the one on the sand winds yeah. up? Like that. Okay. I am in the know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, you, maybe you're in the I don't want to know. I don't know. <laughs> it's Brainwash with Dr. Tom and Drum Rolls with Scotty Irvin, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, Carnival 9. Yes, there's also, a, I think there's a, uh, I don't know if it's a video game or... Um, some kind of game that's available now, but it's actually called Carnival. I don't know if anyone's paying Emerson, Lake, and Palmer royalties, but <laughs> this was on an album called, I love this title, Brain Salad Surgery, featuring a cover by H.R. Giger, the uh, 
Swiss surrealist who also won an Oscar for his uh, designs for the alien uh, monster years later. Cool. But uh, Giger's stuff, uh, I was I was familiar with Giger as an artist at that point, so I heard about the album cover. But the uh, funny thing is, I hadn't heard it very much Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I'd heard, like, uh, From the Beginning and Lucky Man and a few songs like that. Mm-hmm. But I happened to hear this song on the radio one day. And uh, that's back when I actually listened to the radio for guidance and this kind of thing. Um, the arrangement was very, very uh, detailed for three people, especially. Um, keyboards, bass, some guitar, depends on which part in the uh, song we're listening to here. I think Greg Lake may have focused more on guitar in this particular part, but Keith Emerson's keyboards are everywhere. Mm-hmm. He was a very busy man on, the, on this recording. And the drums were played by Carl Palmer. Mm-hmm. Now, I like the drum part. But I'll be perfectly honest, I think in the overall scheme of things, what's influenced me the most on this song is actually Keith Emerson's keyboard part. Uh As a matter of fact, when playing this song uh, on the drum set or attempting to play, I never quite got it up to the same level that they did, but I always enjoyed trying. Mm -hmm. There were times when I found myself almost trying to ape Keith Emerson's part, Mm -hmm. which wasn't exactly helping in the rhythm department, but then again, I was only playing it on my own anyway, so Mm -hmm. you have no one to throw off, you know. Let them have it. But uh, and looking back on it, I found myself humming Keith Emerson's parts and focusing somewhat on Carl Palmer's parts and sometimes getting them mixed up, which is kind of funny. Really? So, you know. It's Brainwash with Dr. Tom and drum rolls with Scotty Irvin. Ozzy Osbourne, I don't know. Yes, and I picked the live version of this song, not because I don't like the studio version. The one, Another one of my favorite drummers comes into play. His name is Tommy Aldridge. Mm-hmm. Tommy does not play on the studio version of I Don't Know. That's actually Lee Kerslack, a former drummer with Uriah Heep, and actually rejoined Uriah Heep and is still with him now, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Lee's playing on this song, but uh, that really wasn't where the influence came in. There was a show called the King Biscuit Flower Hour. I don't know if some of you folks listen, maybe maybe old enough to remember this, uh, this show. I'm not sure, but it was a radio show that came on generally on Sunday nights when I remember it. But they had several different concerts from different people. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had one on Ozzy around the time that his guitar player, Randy Rhodes, got killed. And it was uh, the lineup that also featured Tommy Aldridge playing bass. Uh, I'm sorry, Rudy Sarzo playing bass and Tommy Aldridge on drums. Mm-hmm. Um and they played, uh, you know, most pretty much all the things that they were playing on that particular show, at least the one that they were airing, was from the first album. There were a few songs off Diary of a Madman, which came out afterwards. But most of them were off the first album, Blizzard of Oz. Mm-hmm. And uh, hearing them in a live setting, Tommy Aldridge was playing with a bit more abandon than Lee Kerslack. I mean, you, anytime <laughs> you play something live, it's always going to be a bit more of, uh, you know, you can loosen things up, Lyle. Let me just say it like that. <laughs> and they certainly were. Um, Aldridge was doing something that at the time was somewhat unfamiliar to me. Mm-hmm. Keith Moon had uh, two bass drums and actually employed them, but he didn't play double bass quite the same way. Mm-hmm. When I say double bass, I mean literally either two bass drums or you have a double pedal, a bass drum pedal, that you can use for both feet and play on one at the same time. Uh, Aldridge prefers two separate bass drums, um, and considering the workout uh, that he normally gives his, it's probably a good thing. Mm-hmm. I've had the pleasure of seeing him live three times, once with Ozzy and uh, twice with Ted Nugent. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as uh, what he was doing bass drum-wise, there is no way I would have even tried to come close to duplicating that, but I thought it was fascinating. And some of what he played on bass drum influenced me and in how I played my toms. Mm-hmm. I didn't start trying to play double bass until years after this. Mm-hmm. But I, it, it, it occurred to me that when I was playing along with certain things on the radio, I would sometimes try and duplicate a double bass drum part without actually playing double bass. And I think Tommy Aldridge most definitely had a hand in uh, helping me do that. Mm -hmm. He was also a very visual drummer, as was Keith Moon. Mm -hmm. And I think some of that also came into play. He made things look interesting. (laughs) I like that. 